A young man named Avraham Greenbaum lost his entire family in the Holocaust. After the war, he came to America and he really didn't want anything to do with Judaism. He changed his name to Aaron Green, moved to Alabama where there were very few Jews. He got married, had children. The day his oldest daughter, Rachel, turned 12, they were not going to celebrate her bat mitzvah. Instead, Aaron decided to take Rachel to the mall and buy her anything she wanted there. When they went into a big electronics store and were browsing, Rachel's eye suddenly caught something in an antique shop across the way. She was mesmerized. She couldn't take her eyes of what she had seen. She told her father, I don't want anything from the electronics store. I want to go across to the antique shop. When they got there, the girl pointed to an old menorah and said, that's what I want. Her father couldn't believe it. He was offering her to purchase anything she wanted from the whole mall, and this is what she was choosing. He tried to talk her out of it, but couldn't. Aaron asked the shop owner the price of the menorah, and to his surprise, the man replied, sorry, that's not for sale. Aaron says, what do you mean? This is a store. He offered a lot of money for it. Again, the owner refused, this time explaining, I found out the history of this menorah. A man built it during the war, and it took him months to gather the wood. It survived, but he didn't. It's going to be a collector's item, it's not for sale. Meanwhile, Rachel kept telling her father, that's what I want, all I want is that menorah. So Aaron Green kept offering more money until the owner finally agreed to sell. Rachel was so excited, she took the menorah home, up to her room, and played with it every day. One day, the parents heard a crash from Rachel's room. They ran upstairs and saw the menorah shattered to pieces. The father got really angry at his daughter and admonished her for being so careless, especially as he had paid so much money for it. But later, Aaron felt bad about his reaction. He went to Rachel and he said, you know what? Let's try to glue it back together. And then whilst holding one of the pieces, he noticed a piece of paper wedged inside. He pulled it out and he started to read. Tears welled up in his eyes and soon after, he fainted. His family revived him. What happened? And he replied, let me read you what I found. It's written in Yiddish, so I'll translate. To whomever finds this menorah, I want you to know that I constructed it, not knowing if it would ever have the opportunity to be lit. Who knows if we will live till Hanukkah to see it being kindled. In all probability, going through this war, I will not. But if providence brings this menorah to your hands and you find this letter, promise me that you will light it for me, for us, for my family, and for all those who gave their lives as proud Jews. Aaron Green then looked up at his family and in a choked up voice with tears welling in his eyes, he said, the letter is signed by my father. Even as some might wander in darkness, the Hanukkah lights have a way of miraculously brightening our path, opening our eyes and enabling us to find our way back. That's been the truth and the reality of our tumultuous history. Whether pogroms, crusades, the Inquisition, and the Holocaust, there were those who constantly sought to obliterate us. But even as we hit our lowest point, the darkest moment of night is just before the dawn. Somehow we always find our way back. We rebuild and we thrive once more. Consider the very places that served as the epicenter of Jewish persecution, whether in Russia, Germany, Hungary, the Ukraine. And look at the giant menorahs today that stand tall before the Kremlin at the Berlin Wall and whichever other place besides. The Hanukkah lights remind us that no Jew will be left behind and we will always find our way home. Happy Hanukkah! Moment of Wisdom. Sub-brief and life-changing moments. Join us. Subscribe to Moment of Wisdom channels on YouTube, Telegram, Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp.